we have another parameter in R128 that I've talked to you about. And let's just briefly remain a couple of minutes with loudness range. And that is based on a statistical measure. I've talked about that yesterday, so you know it already. It's based on the distribution of loudness levels, excluding the extremes, so that not this one gunshot that we heard in this excerpt of No Country for Old Men would bias the loudness range measurement. And TC Electronic, as you know, has uh, developed that algorithm and gave it to EBU as an open standard. So here you've seen that yesterday too, an example of the Matrix, yeah, a movie o you all know, with two prominent you know, humps here. Here is the statistical density. So you have, here uh, is all the dialogue, here are most of the action scenes, and loudness range now anticipates the distance between the average soft and the average loud parts of a signal. So loudness range would in that case in the matrix be that kind of uh, region and area, and for the matrix it's 25, and we measure it in LU. So 25 LU is, for instance, loudness range for that. And we now can use that measure too for many uh, purposes to just, for instance, decide whether we need to do some dynamic treatment to our signal because it's just too dynamic for the living room. Or we can also use it to, uh, you know, purpose our whole program, our whole channel for different distribution platforms. If it's for podcasting or internet streaming, we can say, okay, we only allow a loudness range of 10 LU, for instance, because 25, 20 LU, whatever, will never fit into that kind of distribution platform. And we also can check, just a second, we also can check whether something has been done to our audio signal through a chain. Because if we measure loudness range at the input and loudness range at the output, and they are not the same, something has happened on the way. That's also a nice way to use this parameter. So, accordingly, because there is no one limit for different genres or different distribution platforms, we do not define a maximum in R128. We just say, please use this parameter, use loudness range, to determine whether you should do something to your audio or for the specific platform that you are uh, transmitting. We do define a maximum true peak level, nevertheless, and that is minus one and dB true peak, as you know, is the measure now. It's dBFS measured with a true peak meter. And it's important to say that this is for generic PCM material. Yeah? So if you think about transmitting then in a bitrate coded system like AC3 or high efficiency AAC or whatever, then we recommend a lower true peak level because these codecs need more headroom, as Thomas certainly has also elaborated, I would guess, yesterday. Yeah. Good. So minus one true peak for generic PCM material is our maximum true peak level. Why not zero? Because the oversampling measurement still has a kind of uncertainty or a um, possible error due to the fact that the oversampling frequency will not be uh, endlessly high. So therefore we go back one dB, yeah, minus one. Okay, let's just talk about metering side a little bit, you know, not too much. We have something called the EBU mode which defines the kind of framework of a loudness meter, and that proved to be highly successful, I have to say. Not only, well, or, or one of the reasons why it was so successful is that we had all the manufacturers, the relevant manufacturers in the group. So RTW, TC Electronic, uh, what have you, DK Technologies, they are all parts of the group. So they, together with us, crafted this EBU mode. So they cannot complain afterwards, why did you do that? Because they already did it. Yeah? So it was very easy for them to you know, issue compliant meters because they worked actually defining the framework of EBU mode. So that was a very good and a very, you know, a very nice example of users and manufacturers working together to create this uh, EBU mode that we have now. And there are loads of meters already out on the market and there's almost every week or every second week there's a new EBU mode compliant meter coming to the market. Yeah, it's really taking off big time now. So what is at the heart of EBU mode? We have three different integration times. Momentary, short-term and integrated. Momentary is a 400 millisecond integration time. No gate, because I always want to know what is my loudness level now yeah, and the gate shouldn't play a role. It, I want to know if my loudness level is now minus 50 LUFS right now. So that's what I would use for my immediate kind of leveling as a mixer. Also short term. Short term is already moving a little bit slower because it is three seconds integration time, but still no gate because I also want to know if it's a very low in level. 
So the only measurement that has the gate is this integrated one, which is from start to stop. Yeah? That's where the gate is useful. Yeah? I've elaborated on that. That's the only measure with the gate. So these three integration times are at the heart of EBU mode. And every EBU mode meter has to be able to display, not all of them at the same time, but has to be able to display them. Yeah. Good. Scale and range. We have uh, a few variations here. This is, for instance, the scale with a relative display, so with zero LU as the reference. And that's, I think, uh, psycho psychologically interesting, because for unexperienced operators, they like the zero. You know? They like zero, and they like it to be at almost the same position that they have been used to in the QPPM area. So what we can do is just secretly during the night exchange the QPPM to a loudness meter and tell them, yeah, 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 you, you zero, that's okay, yeah, you still keep zero. And behind it, of course, is minus 23 LUFS. So zero LU in an EBU mode meter has to be minus 23 LUFS. That's also one of the applications of the relative measure LU. Yeah? And now the video editors, when they have a very dynamic interview and then a highly compressed music, they now see on the meter that the highly compressed music is 10 LU too loud, whereas the peak level would be the same. So I've always had this experience that I get stuff from the edit room and music after a dynamic interview is just way too loud. And I tell them, why did you do that? And they say, well, yeah, I've peaked, I've leveled it to zero. Yeah? Okay, but now if they level it to zero, it's going to be fine. Because now they have a meter where they actually see what they should hear. Anyway, this is the scale wi where we have 9 LU above the zero, which is called then the EBU plus 9 scale. And then we have another one for more dynamic material, which is just double the range, which we call the EBU plus 18 scale. Yeah, very easy. And of course, we also want to see absolute values if we want to. So you have to be able to switch it to absolute mode 2, where you have minus 23 here. Yeah. But the power of zero, I think, is a big one. So I think especially for inexperienced operators, we will have the zero. OK? So 1 to 8, those are numbers that I'm very happy with, too, because I use them for the logo. And I see Mauro with a t-shirt with a logo. It's unbelievable. So I took it, uh, took the EBU colors, a little bit of warping, a little bit of rearranging, and we have the happy, smiling face. So that's our logo for all our loudness work. And it's on the cover of every of our documents. And it's not only a joke, but manufacturers can actually use the logo to indicate compliance with EBU mode, which manufacturers do. Yeah, they use that. So, so that's nice. So a smiling face. OK, Silvio? Ah, yeah, OK, you don't smile. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, he's always grumpy, you know, it's, it's really bad. All right, let's summarize. Let's find our strategy for the way to loudness nirvana. So one of the foremost results of that, of all that work, is that it's good to use and trust your ears again. Yeah? They are the best loudness meters. So use and trust your ears. And we're back to that. That's really cool. That's really nice. Dynamics and contrast are rewarded. Contrast is something that is essential to every art form. When there is no contrast, it's boring. You know, In painting, in music, in sculpture, whatever, contrast is at the essence of every art form. So if you have a picture like that, it's boring. There is no contrast at all. But with contrast, it's nice. Or this one, boring. Contrast, yeah. We have black and white, we have quiet and loud, we have all these things. Contrast is important, and with loudness normalization, contrast and dynamics are rewarded again. Loudness normalization is the key to this, yeah. and it's happening now. So it's not a question of, yeah, maybe it comes in five years. It's happening now. So for you, you have to decide whether you stay out of the game or not, because it is happening. So we, I'm very confident now that we are really changing the world now. There is no turning back, in my opinion, now. There's a lot of really encouraging signs that this is going to happen now. Yeah? So you really should become the Zen master in your facility of loudness. Okay? Because Zen, as you see here in a Japanese garden, has all those concepts of contrast, of simplicity, of restraint, you know? not overloading things naturalness, all these things. That is all applicable to, to our concept here too. 
At the heart, loudness, that's and not peak, that's the censure. We're in the middle of a revolution, so on the way, dramatic drum roll to a better world. <laughs> so we have this chance. Now, when in your life as a professional do you really have to, the chance to change the world? And we have it now. We really have it now to have happy consumers, at least as far as you know the technical side of things is concerned. So we should be really smiling. You too, Silvio, you should smile. Yeah, really, you should do that. But he's just too grumpy. But I think I can manage. I promised you that fly, you sh so you smile. Yeah, really, okay, yeah, okay, okay. He does it finally, you know, <laughs> finally he does it. <laughs> so one loudness standard and one open loudness standard without proprietary technology, that's also important, yeah? There's no proprietary technology involved for everybody, for the whole production chain. So production, distribution, transmission to the very end, to the consumer. So that, that's great. So now Silvio can get his fly, finally. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, I think I would more like him to have him swallow the remote control. So maybe we'll, we'll have that one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.